Springsteen and the Upstage Club, The Launching Point. Every great success story has a particular point of origin, a defining moment from which all further achievements are derived. In the story of Bruce Springsteen, the setting of this defining moment was Asbury Park's Upstage Club. Founded in 1968 by Tom and Margaret Potter, the Upstage was a music club catering to the burgeoning rock and roll scene of Asbury Park. The club inhabited the third floor space of a building at the corner of Cookman Avenue and Bond Street. The Potters preferred that only original music be played at the club in stark contrast to the demands for covers of popular radio songs from other venues of the time. The jam sessions which spawned from this rule would last late into the night, with the club remaining open and active until 5 a.m. The atmosphere of creativity and experimentation which these two factors generated attracted some of the most promising young musicians of the time, chief among them the 19-year-old Bruce Springsteen, then only beginning his career. The heyday of the Upstage Club precipitated the formation of a unique community that would not only shape the Asbury Park sound as it would come to be known, but as Tony Amato describes, a vital community of individual musicians, each willing to support each other in the development of their talents and the formation of new bands. Participating in the collaboration and camaraderie which the club inspired, Springsteen would hone his craft as both a musician and a songwriter, and form his early band Steel Mill alongside Vinnie Lopez, Danny Federici, and Steve Van Zandt. Springsteen would become a prominent figure in the community of the club, often leading jam sessions and in the process forging lasting bonds with fellow musicians Gary Talent, Southside Johnny Lyon, and future E Street keyboardist David Sanctius. Sanctius describes the profound effect which the club had on the development of his musical career. Upstage meant to me, as, as a young musician, it's, it's that there was a place that there was some place to do it. Because if there wasn't like a place like Upstage, you left your own devices, you're in your bedroom, listening to your stereo, you know, trying to work it out. Or you're in somebody's basement, you know. But a, a situation where, I think that's the beginning of a, of a professional kind of career, okay? I mean, This chapter in the career of Springsteen would ultimately be relatively short-lived. While the Upstage was an integrated club where musicians of all races mingled, racial tensions in the surrounding community continued to climb to a fevered pitch until in 1970, riots broke out across Asbury Park. As Jeff Norman, a resident of Asbury Park at the time, describes it, That's the sad thing. I don't know why it started. In the club, there was no racial prejudice. You'd go outside and felt the tension. But as soon as you came inside the doors, there was not a problem. While not directly affected by the riots, the damage dealt to the economic and cultural scene of Asbury Park would cripple the town's development for years, contributing to the closure of the upstage the following year. On January 22nd, 1971, Steel Mill performed for the final time at the Upstage before disbanding. The closure of the Upstage gave cause for artists like Springsteen to move on to better things. As described in Springsteen's classic Born to Run, there was a common yearning to strike out from their small town origins for greater opportunity and greater acclaim elsewhere. This desire was tempered, however, by the looming legacy of their humble beginnings. The friendships which Springsteen established during his time at the Upstage would reunite him with Sanctious and the other Upstage regulars in the formation of the E Street Band in which he would earn his greatest fame. In recent years, Springsteen has re-involved himself in the story of the Upstage Club. Following a long period of vacancy and a failed attempt to re-establish the club in 2010, the building was purchased for $650,000 in 2017 by Jim and Bill Ross, with the goal of recreating the club's interior on the ground floor. 
During this time, Springsteen returned to the club for the first time since its closure for an interview that would appear in director Tom Jones' documentary film Just Before the Dawn, Riot, Redemption, Rock and Roll, focusing on the development of the Asbury Park sound. In support of the documentary's debut on April 21st, 2017, Springsteen and Van Zant participated in a reunion jam session recalling the glory days of the upstage, which were the nascency of his own career.